Good morning, Mission Control. Well, the family reunion is uh, getting kicked off here. We have uh, the first two waves of people have come in. Uh, we've got about 20 folks, and uh, it's just getting excited. We got uh, one more wave of folks showing up today. It's Friday. We're really excited to have everybody here. I wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, some of you have asked for, you know, how are we doing on the summer projects? So. I'm gonna to try to weave uh, these videos in amongst the uh, family reunion time so that you guys can see what we're doing. Uh, I'm not gonna have a lot of new material. So what I wanna to do today is we're actually gonna go back to some videos that we've had before. Uh, the summer work projects, if you wanna go check those out, uh, you can see the entire videos. But I'm just gonna do uh, a quick shot. I think it's gonna be a three-part series on uh, what we said we we're gonna do versus what we've actually been able to get done. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm, I'm gonna talk about the projects. I'm gonna show you the old clips, talk about the projects uh, in those old clips, and then kind of go through each of the major projects that we have. So, let's go ahead. Lane one and lane four, all the way over there, have to get built. The first project that we had uh, listed in our summer work projects, not the order that we did it in, uh, was to build lanes one and four out, and we've done that, uh, mission complete. Uh, remember, we also decided to change the entire building to microgreens, so we got, uh, them refactored uh, so we have aquaponics on the bottom and the microgreen shells will be showing up in September so we're almost done with that. First things first we got to get a real insulation solution for winter. The next project we talked about in the uh, summer work project video series was insulation and uh, if you've been following along uh, you know that that's been a major decision that we've had to make uh, it's not the hardest one we had to make, the hardest one was the heating solution, uh, but we've actually been able to get the insulation figured out. I took measurements yesterday and sent it to the supplier up in Canada, CoverTech, and I'm excited to uh, get their final quotes in and then actually get that ordered. It has a long lead time of four weeks, so from the time we order it to the time it actually arrives, it'll be about four weeks. And so we'll be putting that in late August, early September as well. Still ahead the November 11th. Lane though. two needs to be con converted. That's this lane right here. Has got to get converted into a microgreen lane. The next project that we had was to refactor lane two to be a microgreen lane, which we've been able to accomplish as well. Again, we're just waiting for the shelves to show up, but uh, it's looking really good. We got all the old automation out of there. We're rebuilding the automation. Uh, you've seen that series. I still got some more work to do, but after the reunion, I'll be able to get to that. Uh, so again, September, uh, we should have the microgreen um, shelving in, and then we got the lighting and stuff that we need to put in for it as well. Is I got to rip up my dehumidifier and uh, HVAC okay. system when here. When it comes to HVAC, this one's kind of an interesting one. Uh, originally, the design I spoke about in the video had us insulating each of the lanes uh, one at a time. Uh, but with our decision to insulate the entire building so that we can have the microgreen processing in there, we've actually uh, kind of changed that whole dynamic. So we still have our large dehumidifier and we're just going to be running that inside of the building. Uh, with, the pro with the heating system that we're going with, uh, the propane, um, it actually creates humidity but it's vented so that humidity is going to go out and I think uh, that burning and then the venting of it is actually going to help remove some humidity from the air as well. So between the dehumidifier, uh, which is an uh, industrial size one, uh, and the burning and, and uh, venting, I think we're going to be okay, but we'll have to keep it. Remember that wood stove that was heating this building until we gave up on it and went with the diesel heaters? Well, that's all got to get ripped up this year. We're not going to be doing Speaking that again. Speaking of heating, uh, you know, the video I just posted yesterday, it really was the hardest decision that we've had to make. It was really, really tough. Uh, it's a very risky decision. Uh, lots of money involved with it puts us pretty out pretty much out there on the edge exposed And that's a very uncomfortable position to be in and that is the heating solution Which we chose to go with propane that's going to get installed on August 25th. I'm actually not doing the install myself uh, I'm gonna have the guys come out um, That are selling us the equipment and they're gonna do all the install. They have all the tools. They have all the equipment uh, It's gonna make it a lot cleaner install. The only thing I have to do is connect the uh, electrical and dig a trench. So those are two things I'm qualified for now. Before I forget, this is the Nemesis bed. Those following along, you know what I'm talking about. This is the bed, it's always giving me problems. This is gonna get completely torn down and rebuilt this okay. year. The next project, the Nemesis, is dead. We killed the Nemesis, he is gone. Uh, we didn't leave uh, the upper beds uh, up up on top, uh, the double deckers are gone as we refactored everything from microgreens. But when I took the Nemesis bed down, I rebuilt it. 
put it back together and it's now sitting on lane four and is doing very, very well. So the Nemesis has been uh, destroyed. So right now, I'll show you these lights a little closer. Lighting. So lighting, we've uh, talked about, I have a video I'm gonna be doing, I have some stuff I'm gonna be playing with and uh, I kinda teased you before, so this time I better give you a lot better trailer. Um, I am looking at fiber optic lighting. Uh, so it was inspired by the Egyptians long ago. They used mirrors to, to direct light. And in today's world, we have new technology that essentially does the same thing and we call that fiber optic cables. Um, there are two companies in the world that are selling fiber optic cable lighting systems. And uh, I think we could, there's a potential we could build one of our own and provide enough light for the microgreens and maybe even the lettuce. But experimentation is required. So I'm actually gonna build, I got some fiber optics, a Fresnel lens, a UV filter, and an infrared filter. I just need to build, build a little rig, put it all together and show you guys that, and then take some measurements with it. The most difficult thing with uh, the, uh, besides just building stuff that it's not hugely difficult, is you need a sun tracking system. So I'm considering using our wind power post. If you've followed along, you know we have a slab poured uh, that is meant for a wind tower or a turbine to be put on. Uh, if this fiber optic idea worked out, uh, there's a potential I'd just mount a sun tracking uh, system on that and uh, we go with that. That said, uh, when the sun's not out, you still need light, which means LEDs, and I'm pretty sure my gut tells me that LEDs are the way to go. So we did buy that long strip light uh, instead of the squares. We took down all the old LEDs um, and we're, we're gonna be buying those long strip lights um, not, they're not strip lights, but it's a, a long bar light, uh, which is more uh, appropriate for our, our application. So uh, we still have to buy all those lights and I'm waiting for the microgreen shelves to get here before I make that procurement because I also have some mylar film that I'm thinking about putting up underneath the shelves to help reflect some more light. So I got some things I'm gonna be playing with with lighting and that is gonna take us right up to the November 11th deadline. So it's not completed, got some ideas, but need other parts to show up first before we can really make sure that those ideas are gonna do is finish lane three here. We need to put the second deck up on bed one. That's where we're at right now. We didn't end up having to do this particular project because we refactored everything from microgreens. So there is no longer an upper aquaponics deck. Now, some of you have wondered, have we changed the entire building to microgreens? And the answer is definitely no. In fact, what we've done is we've increased our microgreen production by fourfold, and we have increased uh, our aquaponic capability by fourfold as well. Uh, actually, by twice, by twice, sorry. Um, so uh, we've increased aquaponics. So the bottom of every lane, the bottom bed is an aquaponic bed, and we're gonna have lettuce and kale and a bunch of leafy vegetables in there growing all year round, that will need the lights for that. Uh, so all the aquaponics will work. And then an upper shelf is gonna be put in a lot smaller shelf that's for microgreens and for germination. So we're excited uh, to get all that stuff brought in. It's gonna be very cool. We actually replace the electric hot water heater with the gas hot water heater that we have right there. When it comes to the digester, I haven't been able to do anything. Uh, Mrs. Martian and I sat down and given the timeline that we have in November 11th, uh, coming so quickly. Uh, we, we haven't been able to touch the digester at all, which is really, really unfortunate because that's like one of the biggest things I want to get to. It's very exciting to be, uh, to, to think that I could be producing uh, the methane that we can use for electricity. And I really want to convert my truck over to be running off of natural gas. We have a company up north that would do it for us. Um, but without having the loading problem solved, uh, the digester is just sitting there and without having loading, you can't convert that heater over uh, to natural gas. Now that heater, uh, that runs hot water into the digester as well as hot water underneath uh, the grow bed or um, underneath the fish tanks. So there's radiant heating underneath all those fish tanks uh, for wintertime operations. So that's why we have that hot water heater right in line. Big projects that I'm, I'm really excited about because uh, if you've been following, you know I've had a lot of hope in the digester system is to actually get the horse toilet up and running. Yes, this is the big project, right? This is figuring out how to load this. Now, I reached out to Washington State University and we had a really awesome conference call uh, just yesterday, in fact, and I think we're gonna get some reinforcements on this one because it sounds like a lot of small farmers have tried this and they get really frustrated and they quit. So I'm really hopeful that between the YouTube community that we have, my stubbornness and persistence, you might say, and willingness to fail and to actually try to solve real hard problems, 
um, that together with Wazoo's help uh, and YouTubers like yourself and, and us and our persistence that we can solve this problem for small scale farmers. And that problem is how do you load the manure into the digester? Once you get it in there, it all works. It takes care of itself. But getting that stuff in in an economical way is very, very difficult. So it's going to involve some custom work and it looks like there really aren't any solutions out there yet. So I'm excited to play in that space and solve a real problem. That's what engineers do, right? We solve problems. So I'm really excited about that. So uh, this is going to be a three-part series just like the original one was uh, where I, I went through all the projects. It took about three, three videos though to get them all up to you. So you got two more coming. Try to get those up in the next few days. See how the reunion goes. Having some fun there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video though. We, we got a lot of work uh, still ahead of us, but we're making good progress. If you did like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. In the meantime, everybody, this is The Real Martian. Out.